Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Friday afternoon, January 21st. We are looking at Window Traders market profile of SPY, IWM, and Triple Qs. And boy, oh boy, not a way that the Bulls wanted to finish this week. What a beating they took. Um, SPY down $26 for the week. This will be the first time I will be calling the monthly in SPY down since March of 2020. So, uh, for the first time in almost two years, the monthly is down. It, it's either been up or balance since March of 2020. So, some cracks on the surface? Possibly. Our heaviest volume in a long time. Well, we're at $191 million already with the after hours still to go. So, we're going to probably be doing $200 million. Another tremendous range. Um, wiped out a lot of downside reference points. Speaking of reference points, incredibly, SPY, now we did pro, but, but only by a couple of pennies, so I'm not going to use L's low. We only ended eight wide, which is fascinating. I thought it was a layup to get nine wide today during J period. So we only end with the day's high and low with a range of over $10. Russell goes out nine wide. Day price probed and an afternoon rally high and high. Triple Q's go out nine wide with a price probe and an afternoon rally high in H. I'll be going over all these indices, charts. They're, they're not pretty, I can tell you that much. Uh, it was a good day. To, today was a tough day. Um, stayed away from a lot of it. The chop was absolutely vicious. You were getting dollar, two dollar rotations in a matter of seconds. Um, the first trade I took today in A was after we sold off, we got back to the opening, and it was the biggest trade I took by far. I took a 50 lot, and then it absolutely rolled back over. So it was my best trade of the day on the 450 puts. Um, I traded 450 puts or 440 calls all day, except once. In B period, I took a long the first time against the 200-day moving average, the 440 calls, and it... Uh, Responded initially, went down then pretty good after that, but then it rallied above it. That turned to be a huge sticking point to 200 as they battled it in uh, G, H, I, and J before the buyers finally gave it up, which opened up the floodgates again in J, K, L, and M to make new lows. Uh, I took a short and D period. Um, Basically against C's high. I'm like, you know, this they, they weren't getting much tempo to the upside. Took a short, again, 450s. And then in F, I took a long. I thought, can we possibly have an afternoon pullback low on a day like today? Wasn't really expecting it. But I was still comfortable to take a small long at that point, which worked out, the 440s. Again, I took a long against the 200-day moving average in H. And the only loss I had on the day was in L. Actually used the 439 calls that time. I thought we were going to go fill the single prints. In K, didn't happen. Came against me, took it off for a loss. We ended up filling them in M, though. Um, as far as destinations, upside, 448.06, which is today's high. Now, let me just see something. They have us closing... Let me just see what they have is closing right now. Just give me one second because I'm on Russell. 437.98. So 438, we'll say. So they have us closing at 438 in SPY. <clears throat> and our first upside destination is 448.06. $10 higher. Now, again, I'm not going to ignore eight wide, but it is fascinating how wide they are. And then above that, we have 450.26, which is the price probe from yesterday. And then the single prints, 450.84 to 453.02 from yesterday. For the downside, today's low is 437.95. And then filling the gap at 436.05. So we got into that gap from October 14th, but we leave 190 uh, points uh, still. $1.90. Then below that, we don't have anything until 433.32, afternoon pullback low from October 13th, 431.54 weekly low, 
Single prints, 431.53 to 52. Two cents from October 6th. I remember those. I couldn't believe they held. Two cents they held by. 429.35 afternoon pullback low from October 6th. 427.54 daily low. And then 426.36 monthly low. And again, write those down because I will not repeat them Monday morning. Now. Let's go to the charts. A lot to talk about. Now, don't forget, we have the Fed on Wednesday. So it's going to be interesting to see how much damage they want to do prior to the Fed. But they've done a lot of damage as it is. Look at Russell, my friends. <laughs> In balance for so long. Ripped out of it to the upside by $10 in November. Only to come right back in. And now here we are. Two months later, we've gone from the high of 244.46 to 196.97. So that's $47. We've come in $47. That's more than 20%. I'm sorry. 10% is 24.48. It's just about 20%. That's bear. That's a bear market. That's a bear, bear market, 20%. Right? The next destination I say is 191.94. Uh, 190.94. So the Russell's almost in bear territory. Fascinating considering we hit an all time high two months ago. <clears throat> so they are firmly down in the monthly. Weekly. <laughs> down. Daily. Down, one time framing down, six days now. So again, before anything can change, you have to stop the one time framing down the daily. Right? You can't come into balance in the monthly or weekly until you come into balance in the daily. Right? Q's. Monthly, down. Next destination, I said, is 350.32. Look what we got to today, folks. 351.40, almost right to that destination. Monthly, down. Weekly, same thing, down. Right to this, look at that. I put this line in, I don't know how long ago. Right at it. Daily, down, one time framing down. Six days also. All three of us are all below our 20, 50, and 200 day moving average. And then on SPY and ES, Monthly is down. Again, we have six trading days left in the month. If we close below 448.92, which incredibly we're $11 below that right now, we would have an outside month down if we don't come back in the next six days. Now, a lot can happen in the next six days, right? You have the Fed and everything else. So a lot can happen. But right now, the monthly is down. And a possible outside month down. Weekly, blew right through this, down. And the daily, one time framing down, six days just like the other two. And we blew through all these levels and the 200-day moving average. So, definite cracks. Now, the volume is incredible, uh, incredibly impressive. However, I still don't think the big boys are selling this yet. It was very orderly. We have, a, we have an $11, $10 range with no single prints. We were making local stops at very key reference points. So I still don't think the big guys are in here selling it yet. <clears throat> so it will be interesting if they get a little nervous. Maybe they'll be passively buying it, right? They have to put money to work at some point this month. So maybe they're passively buying it already or maybe they're waiting for around October's low. Again, I said earlier, I don't have a problem with it getting to October's low, right? Let me get this line out of here for now. <clears throat> Nothing wrong if we get to October's low. That would be nice. You'd have a one, two, three, four, five, six. If you eventually come into balance, a nice six month balance, trade sideways, and then try to resume your upward move. Nothing wrong with that. Market can't go. Look, look, look. 
everybody's like, oh, wow, the, you, know, the, you know, look how much the market's down. The, the market's not down. L look at this. This is from 2012, this monthly chart. Look at this. It's straight, up or balance. There's no, there's no real downwards. You had that triple bottom here that we talked about. But for the most part, you've had a couple of blips, but it's done nothing but go up. It's only healthy for the market to pull back and shake out weak longs, repair poor structure, and get stronger plays in the marketplace. Hope you had a good day trading. Thanks for the likes and subscribing. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.